Hi, blockchain visionaries. I'm George Levy. I believe we're changing the world one blockchain at a time. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about a question that I regularly get in my blockchain and Bitcoin fundamentals course and in my cryptocurrency fundamentals course. The question is, what is Bitcoin mining and how do I get started? You see, many people think that Bitcoin mining is the same thing as printing money in your own house. And in many ways, in the beginning, it used to be like that. It was actually quite easy to do so. But things have changed. And in this video, I'm going to tell you all about it. Stay tuned. In this video, we will be talking about Bitcoin mining and how you can get started with Bitcoin mining. To begin, I'd like to first say that Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. What that means is that Bitcoin is just one type of cryptocurrency and there are other cryptocurrencies which are also mined. So as I will talk to you about Bitcoin mining, I will talk about Bitcoin mining, but I will also talk about other types of cryptocurrency mining. Let's begin with a definition of what cryptocurrency mining is. In a nutshell, Cryptocurrency mining involves processing and confirming transactions that run on a specific type of cryptocurrency in order to secure the integrity and safety of the network. For doing that, the miners are rewarded for their efforts with units of the cryptocurrency that they are mining. Let's talk a little bit more about what that means. So as we get into cryptocurrency mining, in a nutshell, what the miners really do is they build the blockchain for that cryptocurrency. So if you're doing Bitcoin mining and you're a miner, what you're really doing is you are building the Bitcoin blockchain. You as a miner are creating the blocks that get added to the Bitcoin blockchain. And for doing that in the process, you are also creating new units of that cryptocurrency. So if you are building the Bitcoin blockchain, every time you create a new block, you are rewarded in bitcoins as of the moment of this recording the reward for mining and creating new bitcoin blocks is 12.5 bitcoins now cryptocurrency mining or in this case we're talking bitcoin mining has been called often competitive transaction processing and that is you as a miner are involved in a race against other miners all around the world because there can only be one winner in every block what that means is that every time that a new block is created and added to the Bitcoin blockchain, which is done approximately on average every 10 minutes, a miner or a group of miners working together who actually make that block win that reward of 12.5 Bitcoins. But there's only one winner declared, and that winner could be an individual miner, which is very, very, very rare or a mining pool and a mining pool would actually be more often a group of people that get together and mine together combining their power on their computers to be able to actually win and when they win they share those 12.5 bitcoins amongst themselves depending on how much of the power they've contributed to it that type of computing power is called hashing power so your hash power which is how often your computer can go through hashes, which is creating new cryptographic hashes of the information inside the block. And I will talk about this further in the lesson. The hashing power that you add to the actual processing and creating of that new block, you are rewarded by the mining pool based on how much hashing power you're contributing. Now, the key thing that you have to think about when you're in cryptocurrency mining is the concept of profitability. Profitability is essential. Because in the early days of Bitcoin, when there were hardly any miners, it was actually really easy for you to be able to mine Bitcoin. You could simply run your home computer and your computer would just create Bitcoins. As a matter of fact, in the early days, the mining reward was 50 Bitcoins every time a new block was created. But over time, every four years, there's something called halving, which actually brings down the reward by half. As of this moment, the mining reward is only 12.5 Bitcoins. And that reward will be halved uh, when the next halving occurs, which is in the year 2020. Now, as we go forth, this profitability factor, which I'm going to talk to you about, becomes essential because as the cryptocurrency prices have dropped, miners are having a very, very hard time because they still are running their mining computers. And these computers suck up a lot of power and you need to pay for the electricity for these. So as the profitability drops, it becomes less profitable for you to create uh, new blocks and be able to receive the reward in Bitcoin. Now what I'd like to do is I want to take you on a Bitcoin mining field trip. 
And for that, I'm going to take you to some interesting links so you understand better this concept of Bitcoin mining. I'm going to begin now with a demo that's available at demoblockchain.org. And I'm going to use the section of that demo called demoblockchain.org slash block. And in that, I have an example of what a block on the Bitcoin blockchain would look like. Now, this is a very simplified version. But a key thing I want to point out to you is that a block has the number for that block. Every block is chronologically ordered. And I'm going to show you later a real block. But let's assume this was block one. So we have a block number. We have the data within that block, right? And then we have an associated cryptographic hash. This is the block hash that this block has, which corresponds to these transactions that are in here. And I'm going to tell you how this works. Let's assume that you actually wanted to add another transaction to this. If we go transaction seven, and these are just examples, notice that the color changed to red. And that's because this block hash is no longer valid. For the purposes of this example, what I want to share with you is that in order for a block hash in this demo to be valid, it needs to have at least four leading zeros. And that's because the value needs to be below a certain target value that's determined by the difficulty of the, blo of the Bitcoin blockchain. Don't worry at this precise second about this. I'm going to explain better how that works. This network difficulty, which is what determines how many leading zeros or how low this number at the bottom is, adjusts depending on how many miners and how much hashing power is in the network. But let me explain to you just for basic purposes how this works. Let's assume that I actually want to make this block valid again. I have to change what is known as the nonce. The nonce is number used once. And essentially what a nonce does is it's a random number that you can add to change this cryptographic hash. What we have here is a block, and this is a cryptographic hash. To be specific, these types of hashes are what is known as SHA-256, Secure Hash Algorithm 256. But at this moment, don't worry. What you need to know is that this is the block hash. For me to be able to change this block hash and make it valid again, I have to change this nonce. So I can try new numbers. I can try one. Well, that doesn't work. Let's try two. Two, that doesn't work. Let's try three. And I have to individually try different nonces to see which nonce will actually give me a hash that has, for the purposes of this demo, four leading zeros. Notice how hard it is for me to do this. I could go all day here. 12, let me try 13, let me try a bigger number, 400. And what I'm trying to tell you is that it's very difficult to get a cryptographic hash with four leading zeros. Now, I do have an option to mine, and this explains exactly what Bitcoin mining is all about. What the cryptocurrency miners are doing, or the Bitcoin miners rather, are doing is they are going through multiple attempts to try to find which is the nonce that when combined with the data in that block will let them have the number of leading zeros that are required to make this a valid block. So this is a race. If you have a really fast computer, Odds are that you will find the nonce that will let you get the, the corresponding required block hash faster than anybody else. And of course, since we said only one winner is declared every approximate 10 minutes when a new block is added, it's very important for you to have a powerful enough computer to be able to get the number of leading zeros that are required. So having said this specifically, and notice key things I want to tell you, notice how many attempts it took for the computer to find a nonce that let it get four leading zeros. Let's make this complicated again. Let's add another transaction. Let's say we did transaction eight and I have to mine it again. I have to start from scratch and the computer has to try again. Now notice this time, even though there were more transactions, it has a lower number for you to be able to get the nonce. And that's important because what that means is that no matter how many transactions you put in a block, you really have no idea what the nonce is going to be to be able to get the required number of leading zeros for you to be able to have a valid block hash. Now, let's go one step further, and I'm going to take you to a different URL. And this is actually btc.com, which is a very well-known block explorer. And the btc.com block explorer gives you all the latest blocks. And notice, right now, the latest block was 559,652. And notice that there's a field called block hash. Now, realize how many leading zeros were needed for this block to be valid. And that's because the Bitcoin difficulty level, which you see down here, 
is set to a very, very, very high number. Now it's very, very hard for you to be able to get this and it requires billions and billions of random attempts for every miner to be able to find the right block hash for the block that they're creating. And notice that it's a competition. Every block, the brunt of them are won by different pools. This is a pool of miners. This is a different pool of miners. This is another pool of miners. But notice that, for example, these three in a row, 559,645, 646, 647, were won by this one specific pool, btc.com. Another key thing I want to point out to you is that this site, btc.com, tells you the pool's real-time hash rate. As I mentioned, the hash rate is how much computing power these different pools have. And as you may notice, btc.com right now has more, con more pool hash rate power than any of the other pools. As of the fact, it has 6,720 PETA hashes. Notice that the second one is ant pool. And you'll see that in these, ant pool has not won any of these blocks in recent time. You will find some of the other usual suspects. You see F2 pool is right here, which is number three in hash rate. You see via BTC. And what you'll find is that it's not always the most powerful pool that wins, because it is a true competition, but the odds are in favor for the pool that has the most hash rate. I would like to now take you to bitsonline.com, which is a website that provides unbiased cryptocurrency news. And in the process, I'm going to share with you some key articles revolving around mining, which will be enlightening. I want you to understand the scale of what Bitcoin mining is all about. Because in the beginning, it used to be that anybody could actually mine Bitcoins at home using their home computer. But nowadays, just to put into context the size of these Bitcoin mining operations, let me just focus on one mining facility facility from Bitmain. Bitmain happens to be the hardware manufacturer that creates mining computers. They actually create a device called an ant miner. And these ant miners are actually probably the most popular type of mining rig that people buy and run. Now, just to put into context what Bitmain and their Bitcoin mining facility does, this one mining facility in Washington contains 8,100 ant miners and consumes 12 megawatts of power. So to put into context, this massive facility has 8,100 of these ant miners running, consuming massive amounts of power, all of them competing to win those 12.5 bitcoins approximately every 10 minutes. And this is just one mining facility from Bitmain, and Bitmain has multiple mining facilities all around the world. So if you're actually thinking about getting into Bitcoin mining, and you think that by running a miner in your house, you're going to be able to win those 12.5 Bitcoins, you have to put in the context that by yourself, you're nothing. Yet, if you join a mining pool, you too can join these massive operations. For example, Bitmain runs Ant Pool, and you could be part and join forces with Bitmain. But take into consideration that running one mining rig will not really give you the power that you need to get 12.5 Bitcoins. You're only going to get the amount of equivalent hash power that your system will provide to this mining pool and you're a very very small portion of the entire operation so people who join these mining pools often run many many different miners at the same time to be able to increase the chances both of the pool winning and then once they win they get a larger cut of the actual winnings so just want to put into context the size of these mining operations let's go back again to the concept of profitability this is all very, very good when Bitcoin is very, very expensive because, as you may know, the price of Bitcoin is very, very volatile. So if you're mining Bitcoins and a price of one Bitcoin is $20,000, there's a lot of money when you win 12.5 Bitcoins. But if the price of Bitcoin drops dramatically, then you know that those 12.5 Bitcoins are going to be worth far less. And this is a key component you need to take into consideration as you actually think about getting into cryptocurrency mining because if the price of Bitcoin drops, you stand to actually be at a loss. And in fact, many of these different cryptocurrency mining operations have actually started closing because of the crashing crypto markets. So take into consideration that if you actually delve into cryptocurrency mining, you need to understand that you are also vulnerable to this price volatility because you don't get paid in dollars or yens or euros. You get paid in Bitcoin. 
And for you to be able to pay whatever your costs of electricity and other expenses are, you need to sell those Bitcoins. And if the price of Bitcoins is down, then that means you're going to get a lot less money for the Bitcoins that you sell. So let's explore a little bit more this cryptocurrency mining concept. And the first thing, now that you've understood how cryptocurrency mining and Bitcoin mining work, is, is it even worth it for you? And you need to understand that you will need more than your home computer to succeed. Key thing is that what you will need is what's known as a mining rig. And these mining rigs are the mining hardware that are used specifically for Bitcoin mining. The reason why I say that is because home computers simply don't have the capacity to be able to hash as much as required to be able to win these competitive races against the other miners. So unless you have a powerful mining rig, or better, a whole slew of mining rigs that you control, the odds of you winning anything are very, very slim. Now, there are different options should you want to get involved in Bitcoin mining. And the first one is mining at home. If you are planning on mining at home, you need to take into consideration that you're going to need space to keep these multiple mining rigs at. These mining rigs generate a lot of heat and they also produce a lot, a lot of noise. So if you actually have these things, it will actually get really loud in whichever place you have in your house. So the challenge with that is that you need to consider where it is exactly that you're going to need to keep these mining rigs. And remember also that mining rigs are also vulnerable to somebody stealing them. So never leave them in a vulnerable place that somebody could actually find out you have them and try to steal them away from you. Now, if you do want to start mining Bitcoin mining, you're going to have to start with a mining pool. Notice, you can't the odds of you actually winning any of these races because it truly is a competitive race to try to see who can actually find the block hash faster than anybody else you're not going to be able to do it via what's known as solo mining if it's just you that no longer applies because you're competing against these massive pools of miners all joining forces so should you want to get into bitcoin mining you're going to have to join a mining pool and as i showed you if you go to that website i showed you btc.com it keeps track of the most powerful pools and their hash rate. Those are all options that you may want to join if you actually want to join a mining pool to begin Bitcoin mining. The other option is for you to be paying somebody to host your miners. As I said, keeping these mining rigs in your house may not be the best choice. Some people just don't have the space for it. You may have an issue with actually having enough electricity to be able to run these machines. The noise and the heat factors are also a big problem. So you can actually pay someone to host your miners. And there are mining facilities where you can actually send your miners and you pay them to actually run and administer your machines. Now these people will professionally upkeep your machines to make sure they're always running and that nothing breaks because these machines do break sometimes and also they go offline sometimes and guess what if your machine's not connected to the internet and it doesn't actually run you're not making any money and you're just spending electricity so at the end of the day it makes sense in some cases to pay someone to host your miners and these places actually give you the opportunity for you to keep your miners there securely and they will run those systems for you and make sure that you actually get your corresponding block reward whenever it is that you win the next one is what is known as cloud mining now cloud mining doesn't involve you having to buy any equipment in fact it's a subscription model basically you're getting a cloud opportunity to pay a monthly subscription or however approach they have where you pay a company for a portion of the mining rigs that they have they have farms of these miners running constantly and you are able to pay them a subscription basis for a certain percentage of the hash rate so by actually paying them you're actually renting a certain amount of that hash rate so that when they win you actually get a corresponding amount of bitcoins for the amount of hash rate that you're actually renting from them. So this model of cloud mining makes some sense for some people. Now, buyer beware. Cloud mining is a very, very volatile space and not all cloud miners are legitimate. So do your research in any of these activities, whether you're paying someone to host your miners or whether you're actually buying a mining rig, make sure you're actually buying a legitimate mining rig from a reputable source. There's a lot of scams going on in cryptocurrency mining and I want to make sure that you're well prepared by researching all your options. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something in the process. I bring you brand new videos every single week, so I invite you also to subscribe so we can stay in touch. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. I would love to hear from you. 
Until next time, we are changing the world, one blockchain at a time. I'm George Levy. Thank you for watching.